Myra Kraft, philanthropist and wife of Patriots owner Robert Kraft, has passed away at the age of 68. She succumbed this morning after a battle with cancer. News Center 5's Liz Bruner reports on Myra Kraft's life. Rarely was Myra Hyatt Kraft without her husband Robert by her side when it came to giving away millions of Kraft family funds to causes close to her heart or simply honoring everyday heroes. This Worcester native graduated from Brandeis University in 1964, one year after marrying Robert Kraft. She would raise four sons. In 2003 and again in 2011, Boston Magazine named her one of the most powerful women in Boston. Myra Kraft's legacy has been felt in just about every corner of this community and around the world in the arts, education, women's issues, health care, religion, American and Israeli issues, and even sports. Admittedly not a football fan, at least not at first, she taught herself the game and became one of its most ardent fans, often seen by her husband's side as owner of the New England Patriots and through the Patriots Charitable Foundation. Mrs. Kraft used her own battle fighting cancer to help launch the NFL's kick cancer campaign just last fall. And while she was known to shun the spotlight, Myra Hyatt Kraft will be remembered as a shining light and champion to so many. And that was Liz Bruner reporting this midday. The New England Patriots issuing a statement this morning reading, words cannot express the deep sorrow that we feel in learning of the passing of Myra Hyatt Kraft. Myra passed away early this morning after a courageous battle with cancer. We are all heartbroken. The global philanthropic community and the New England Patriots family have suffered a great loss. And lots of reaction is pouring in from admirers of hers. Governor Deval Patrick and his wife Diane called Myra a friend. She... Uh had an incredible kindness and uh, and thoughtfulness and and shrewdness as a business person and as a uh, as a leader among the uh, not for profit and charitable um, sector here. And I, I spoke with Robert a little earlier this this morning, and I, I know that he and the whole family are devastated, and so are we. Three hundred thousand adults with severe disabilities in Israel need special support services. JDC Israel is creating a strategic partnership with the Israeli government, the Mossad for Disabilities, to improve their lives. The SIL, Center for Independent Living, is one of these programs. This is so unique and serves such a valuable purpose for so many people. And I, it's another example of JDC being the best. Is, is just an amazing place. I know that there is, this was the first in the country. There's one more in Beersheba that are expected to come online. I think that if the SEAL were not to have started, um, people would have been very, very much alone. In a rare mission, members of the board of the American Joint Distribution Committee gathered in Israel to discuss new and progressive ways to serve the needs of the world's Jewish communities in distress. IBA's Leah Stern spoke with Myra Kraft, a leading Jewish philanthropist working with the JDC, about the organization's ongoing efforts. I'm going on Wednesday to Nempopetrovsk, which is, I'm from Boston, and it's our sister city in the Ukraine. And one of the things that we'll see the JDC is very involved with is the feeding of the hungry in the former Soviet Union. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of starving elderly Jews. Those Jews that were unfortunately affected by the Holocaust get a certain amount of money and a certain amount of items. If an elderly Jew in the former Soviet Union, for instance, was in St. Petersburg, which was never overrun by the, by the Nazis, a Jew there is not entitled to the same amount of goods that a Jew that was on a first hand affected by the Holocaust. So JDC is very much involved in trying to make sure that there's money for all elderly Jews. And what is Jewish life like in these places? Well, the first time I went was about 11 years ago, and it was really just the beginning of a rebirth because for 70 years there was no, I mean, religion really was not allowed and Jews were not allowed to practice, there were no Jewish schools, and it, it's just amazing what has happened. There are Hillels, there are Jewish schools, there are Jewish kindergartens, um, there are Jewish age-old homes, there are Jewish community centers that have all been the focal parts throughout the former Soviet Union for helping to revitalize life and a Jewish way of life in the former Soviet Union. 
What drives you personally to get so involved in these Jewish and Israeli causes? Um, I, th I think it's, it was, it's the way I grew up. Um, Judaism is very important to me, not so much religiously, but culturally as a people and the Jewish way of life. And um, I'm, I'm also very involved in the, in the non-Jewish world too, but um, there is just something very immediate. I think it comes down to if we're not going to be for ourselves, no one else in the world is going to be for us. Founded 15 years ago, the American Football League in Israel boasts some 70 teams with over 900 players. There's even an all-women's league supported by Kraft's wife, Myra, and a high school league sponsored by the NFL. To our women, just a short time ago, you were standing on the sideline watching the boys play. Not anymore. Now you're players. She was just a, um, you know, great, uh, great representative of, of this team, and you know we love her. We're gonna miss her. Um, there's a huge void left on our team. There's a huge void left in this organization, in this building every day, and everything that she stood for. And you know, no one uh, will ever be able to replace that. So she left a great legacy for all of us to learn from and to build upon. What she gave back to us and to myself was a sense that we needed to give back to the community because I, I do know she was the force behind the Patriots being so active in the community. I felt like she was the heartbeat of this organization. In life, you, you have couples, you have, you have husband and wife, you have girlfriend and boyfriend. And they always say behind a good man is a great woman. And Mr. Kraft had that. She was the conscience of this organization and I always felt comforted, comforted that she was there in Mr. Kraft's ear that the right decision was going to be made because of, because of her influence. When I was drafted and I met the Crafts for the first time and just the way she embraced me like she embraced uh, so many other people, she felt like another mother um, that I had in New England. I remember negotiating my own contract back early in my career and we were in the, in the, in the meeting room and Mrs. Kraft came into the meeting room and said, this guy better be a part of this organization or I don't want to be a part of it. And she didn't have to do that, but she knew exactly what was going on. She wanted me a part of this team and I loved her for it. We took a trip to Israel together. I had a, an incredible experience being with her and being with Mr. Kraft. And uh, you know, really what, what always stood out to me is their love for one another. And, uh, it was a great partnership, they, and it still is, you know, I mean, she, you know, she, to me, she's immortal, she'll always live on. One thing I'm gonna miss a lot, before every game, I, used, I normally go see Myra and Mr. Kraft and give each of them a kiss, you know, and uh, this year I won't be able to give her one, you know. Um, so I told Mr. Kraft, I'm gonna have to give you two, <laughs> one for her and one for me, and that's one thing I'm gonna miss, I mean, she meant a lot to this organization, this community.